Welcome back, friends. First, I want to express my gratitude for all of your support. It blows my mind that there are now over 2,000 people in our little game dev community, and a special thank you for sending all the interesting questions. You definitely keep me on my toes for sure. Today is a special Dave the Dev video. I've been prototyping an RPG using the Godot engine for a while, and I'm ready to start sharing it with you. I'll still be doing Godot tutorials just through the lens of this project. In fact, that's actually what I've been doing all along. The custom cell shaders, the dialogue editors, were all built specifically for this game project. Yet, they were only the tip of the iceberg. In this video, I'll be using my actual game project to show you around the XP registry that I mentioned back in the variable injection dialogue video. But I have even more news. Since our community is growing so fast, I've been working hard to set up a new Dave the Dev Patreon page and Discord server. When you become a patron of any tier, you'll gain access to our community's Discord server, where you can turn to get a little bit of help or guidance on your own Godot projects. Patrons at the developer tier and above will receive my RPG game's entire Godot project file, including all of the assets and source code, updated every month, with highlights of major changes. The support I receive from you through Patreon is put towards being able to spend more time answering game dev related questions, making continual updates to my game project and providing you with the source code, developing more open source tools for Godot, and making more video tutorials here on the Dave the Dev YouTube channel. If you're interested, follow the link in the description to find the Dave the Dev community Patreon page. Hope to meet you soon! With the announcements out of the way, let's get to the topic at hand, the XP registry. In a nutshell, the XP registry is an auto-loaded global script that allows objects to make their variables globally available in a safe way. Let's say we have two objects, the player character with stats like MP and HP, and a UI element that displays the character stats. To update the UI element, we'd need a reference to the player character object to have access to its HP and MP variables. However, this makes the UI element object dependent on the player character object. For simple projects, this isn't much of a problem, but when the project scales up, and many of the systems become interdependent, things can quickly get out of hand. A general rule of good programming practice is to have the least amount of object interdependence as possible, and that is what the XP registry helps us do. Let's say that we have the same two objects again, a player character and a UI element. If we add a third object, the XP registry, that can act as an intermediary between the two objects, then suddenly they don't need to communicate with each other anymore. They don't need to know anything about each other. In fact, one object should run perfectly fine on its own, even if the other object doesn't exist at all. The caveat is that both objects need to know how to interface with the registry. Here's how the registry works. The player character object has an HP variable that many other systems might be interested in accessing. So when the player character object enters the scene tree, it registers that variable using the registry's register function. It passes this function three things, a reference to itself, a name of the variable, or a name of the function that returns the variable, and finally, a string keyword that will become a nickname for that variable that other objects can use to look up the variable's value. While we're at it, let's not forget that when we register a value, we should also unregister it when the player character object exits the scene tree. We can use the registry's unregister function to do this. When it's time for the UI element object to display the player character's HP, it can ask the registry if it has the player character's HP. If the answer is no, the UI element has a chance to gracefully recover from the lack of information by using a fallback value. If the answer is yes, the UI element can use the registry's lookup function to receive the value and display it to the screen. With the theory under our belt and out of the way, let's put it into practice using my actual RPG game prototype. I'm going to do two things to demonstrate the use of the XP registry. First, I'll add a simple UI element that displays the player character's HP while the player walks around the world. Second, I'll set up an entity in the game world that tells the player their HP through the dialogue system. Today, I'll be presenting these examples a bit differently than usual. I just turned on my desktop recording software and started working as if I was working normally on the game, and I've edited together the highlights. 
If you have questions about what I'm doing, I'll be happy to answer them in the comments below. Hope you enjoy! And there we have it. I hope learning about the XP registry will give you ideas about how you can structure your projects to decrease object interdependence. If you'd like to see how my implementation of the registry works in more detail, 
head over to Patreon where you can download the entire project file for my RPG game. You're free to use any of the code you find in the project file for your projects. You can also join our community Discord server if you want to get a little help in Godot, or if you want more answers about the XP registry. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the XP registry's big brother, the XP command server, which is arguably the single most important script in the game. In short, it is the glue that holds everything together. If you don't want to miss it, make sure to subscribe to be notified when the next video drops. Hope to see you then. Until next time, happy devving.